Uh, thank you for joining this KSERS 2020 and Carlos Virtual Congress. Uh, in this session, uh, from now on, I will start a 4K video session with invite faculty. My name is Hee Liu from Jambung National University Medical School and Hospital. It is uh, my great pleasure to introduce our four very famous speakers today as a chair. In this session, we have uh, four Korean speakers who are well-known expert laparoscopic surgeon in the world. They will talk to us about their expert field. I'd like to introduce our speakers. The first speaker is Hyung Wo Kim from Seoul National University Bundang Hospital. And Professor Kim will give a lecture on laparoscopic distal gastrectomy using 4K vision. Second speaker is uh, Yong Jin Kim from Hypros Yangji Hospital. He will deliver a lecture on laparoscopic uh, revisional gastric bypass, gastric band to Ruanai gastric bypass. And third speaker is Jung Min Park from Jungang University College of Medicine. He will present a lecture about parasopagial hernia repair. Then our last speaker will be Kyung Seok Seo from Seoul National University College of Medicine. Professor Seo will talk about laparoscopic hepatectomy using 4K imaging system, comparing with 3D flexible system. So please enjoy uh, our four speakers' lectures. And after all lectures, we'll have a QA time with our speakers. And Please feel free to ask our speakers your questions by clicking question button at the right of the screen or via the chat window. Thank you. Dear colleagues and friends, ladies and uh, gentlemen, I hope you and your family are safe and healthy during this global pandemic. It is my great honor uh, to have opportunity to speak for the Congress. Today's my talk is laparoscopic distal gastrectomy using 4K vision. I have no financial support from an industry source at uh, the current presentation. The 4K resolution uh, has four times the number of the pixel compared to a full HD resolution. The higher resolution allows a clearer image of the field without blurring of the small structures such as nerves and small vasculature. Higher resolution also gives a better perception of the depths compared to other 2D monitor. The laparoscopic gastrectomy is now considered one of the standard treatment for gastric cancer, especially early gas cancer located at distal part. This graph shows the number of the each type of gastrectomy from the Korean nationwide survey of the gastric cancer. The case of the laparoscopic gastrectomy uh, have been increasing. And because the laparoscopic gastrectomy is known to have short-term benefits such as less post-operative pain, shorter hospital stay, and better cosmetics without compromising long-term survival. Uh, today's case, uh, this particular 58 years old female with no other past medical history was admitted due to stomach lesion founding during screening program. The patient was diagnosed uh, with early gastric cancer at the anterior row of the low body. The clinical staging was clinical T1B tumor. The tumor size was 2.5 cm. Her BMI was 28. We did Totally laparoscopic distal gastrectomy, D1 plus node dissection, and preserving the cellular branch of the vagus nerve, and we did Lu and Y gastrogenostomy as anticholic and isoperistaltic fashion. According to Japanese gastric cancer treatment guideline, D1 plus lymph node dissection could be indicated for clinical T1. B and zero or tumors. Please enjoy this short video clip. We made a small incision uh, on the umbilicus dilectory and we insert additional pore port. 
This patient had fat liver, and we did liver retraction using a hanging maneuver. This patient had coronary vein directly drained to liver. And uh, we uh, applied a straight suture uh, for uh, liver retraction. And, uh, the suture was fixed at the left side of the clues and parse procedure. And also we applied gas for uh, protection of the liver. We started a uh, partial mentectomy at the middle part of the stomach. Now we often the lesser sac and continue the partial mentectomy up to left gastroepiploid vein. Now we are approaching um, the root of the uh, left gastroepiploid passers for dissection lymph node 4 SP, skeletonized or soft tissue around the vein, and uh, clip and transect. After that, we cleared a great curvature for dissection lymph node 4 up to the first branch of the short uh, gastric artery. Now we did a partial omentectomy at the right side of the uh, stomach. This is a fusion layer, so we detached many small origin posterior of the stomach. We dissect fusion layer uh, for approaching for lymph node 6. All soft tissue and uh, mesial colon was detached from the mesial gastrium. Uh, before dissection of lymph node 6, we should uh, identified three uh, very important anatomy. First one is duodenum and pancreas and gastrocolic trunk. This is the best way to prevent complication for lymph node 6 dissection. Now we skeletonized light gastroepiploic pain first. This is a lymph node 6. And you can see the position of the ASPDA. And we skeletonized the light gas hyperploic pain and clip and mm, transect. This particular patient, the BMI was 28, very obese patient, so we dissect. We clearing from the duodenum first. After that, we skeletonized light gas epiploid artery and infrapilotic vessels. This is a retrograde approach. It is very useful for obese patients. And now we are approaching to supraduodenal area. Uh, skeletonized light gastric artery for dissection lymph node station 5. And clip and transect. After clearing all lymph node 6 and 5, we transect duodenum. Now we started suprapancreatic node dissection, including lymph node 8, A, 9, 7, and 11, P. Before our dissection lymph node, we always incise peritoneum uh, first. 
After that, we skeletonized our layer of the nerve. This is a lymph node 8A and common hepatic artery. After dissection, uh, right side of the uh, pancreas, and now uh, we dissect left side of the pancreas. Uh, we skeletonized a splenic artery. This is all the cancer, so we just uh, removed the lymph node along the splenic artery, not splenic vein. If uh, for the advanced cancer, uh, you should expose your uh, the splenic pain. And we skeletonized left gastric artery. Uh, and we identified as the cellular branch of the vagus nerve and preserved the vagus nerve and dissect lymph node 7 only. And also we cut gastric branch and preserved a cellular uh, branch of the vagus nerve. Here we preserve the cellular branch of the vagus nerve. We cut left gastric artery, usually a gastric branch only. Now we skeletonized a lymph node 1 and 3 and the paragastric node. You can say many a small lymph node at the lymph node station 3. After clearing the lesser curvature of the stomach, we did a gastric transaction. And we made enterotomy at the tip of the stomach at the greater curvature. And we made Gastrojejunostomy, and after uh, firing staple, linear staple, that we closed common entry hole using uh, laparoscopic suture technique temporally. And we apply the linear staple to closure common entry hole. After that, we made a side to side jejunostomy. And also, it closed. Uh, common entry or temporally using a laparoscopic suture technique. And closed by a linear staple. After that, we closed all mesenteric defect and pitots and space for preventing uh, internal hernia. This is a final view of the procedure. The operation time was three hours. The estimated blood loss was less than 20 milliliter and time to first practice was at post-operative day 3. The time to first soap the diet was uh, post-operative day 2. Uh, she could discharge 
at uh, post operative day 5 without any adverse events. Thank you for your kind attention. I hope you always staying safe and uh, see you next time in person in 2021. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Hello everyone, I am Yongjin Kim from H Plus Yangji Hospital in Seoul, Korea. This presentation was recorded by Dr. Yuna Chung, who is a fellow on my bariatric metabolic surgery team. I feel honored to be speaking today and would like to thank the KSELS and KAROS committees. Today, I will be sharing a video of a revision case from gastric band to ruin my gastric bypass. First, I would like to disclose my case mix. Up until 2018, gastric bypass had been my primary choice of procedure. However, from 2019, due to the new application of nationwide insurance coverage for bariatric surgery, the percentage of sleeve has increased to comprise 66% of all procedures. Regardless of the year, 13 to 14% of my cases have been revisions. I reviewed my revision cases from the past 18 months in detail. Unsurprisingly, most cases were related to gastric band. Revision bypass was the second most commonly performed procedure following gastric band removal. Today's case is of a 35-year-old female patient who had received gastric band surgery in October 2013. Her body weight at the time of revision was 92 kilograms and her BMI was 33. She was on medication for intractable gastric reflux. The phi angle of the gastric band was maintained at 45 degrees, and there were no abnormal findings on the preoperative endoscopy. Although I typically use five trocars for primary bypass, an additional trocar is placed in revision cases. A 15 millimeter trocar is placed in the right abdomen for the operator's right hand, and is used for entry of black cartridges. Before we start the video, I would like to summarize the steps of the procedure. First, pneumoperitoneum is achieved. Second, removal of the gastric band is done and exposure of the angle of his is performed. Third, formation of the gastric pouch with black cartridges is done. Afterwards, an intraoperative endoscopy is performed to assess anastomotic bleeding or leakage. The gastric band is already removed and the silicon loop can be seen on the right side. As in primary bariatric surgeries, full exposure of the angle of his is important. Removal of adhesions along the band site and the prospective stapling line needs to be done as much as possible. With removal and dissection of scar tissue, the angle of his is gradually exposed. Here, I am removing adhesions at the prospectus stapling line for gastric pouch formation. Dissection with laparoscopic scissors is safer and easier than with energy devices in this step. Formation of the gastric pouch is performed in the same steps as it would be in a primary procedure. The first stapling is done immediately below the previous band site. A purple cartridge was used in this video because the tissue was not as thick as other cases with more scarring. I generally believe that black cartridges are better suited for stapling in revision cases. A 
Another key point in the process of vertical stapling towards the angle of his in a revision case is to expose the left cruise, which allows safer division compared to blunt dissection of the posterior wall. As most experienced surgeons agree, I personally recommend over sewing along the stapling line of black cartridges. I like to use V-Lock 3.0 for this step. Although I usually use the double stapling technique for gastrojejunal anastomosis, the posterior wall can be used as in this case when there are visible vessels on the anterior wall. The point with least tension is selected for anastomosis. When double stapling technique is performed, the common entry hole is usually closed with a running suture. But when the anastomosis is performed on the posterior wall, I personally like to perform interrupted sutures. The rest of the procedure is the same as in primary bariatric surgery. The jejunum is divided approximately one centimeter from the anastomosis to co for complete formation of the RU limb. The jejuno jejunostomy is performed in a side-to-side -side manner with a 45 millimeter linear stapler. The mesenteric defect at the jejunal jejunostomy is closed with two zero ethibond sutures. Additional sutures are performed at the gastrojejunal anastomosis to further reduce tension. Lastly, complete repair of the Peterson's defect is performed with non-absorbable V-lock. In the case of revision bypass, it is important to decide whether or not to perform the procedure in a one-stage manner. The BMI of the patient, comorbidities, the surgeon's experience, and surgical skills are all things to consider among other things. Another point to remember is that thorough history taking is essential for assessment of possible complications related to the gastric band. In summary, complete exposure of the angle of his is most important in revision bypass. 
Removal of scar tissue at the prospective stapling site is another crucial step. Lastly, utilizing a stapler cartridge with a higher height is a safer option in most cases. Thank you for your attention. My name is Jungmin Park from Chungang University Hospital in Seoul. It is my great honor to present my surgical video in this conference. I'd like to show you the video of laparoscopic paralysis partial hernia repair using 4K video system. I have nothing to disclose. We used Asrex UHD 4K surgical imaging platform. 4K is a new graphic resolution. It was named because it has 4000 pixel horizontal resolution approximately. So 4K shows 4 times higher image definition than full HD. It provides greater detail and greater depth perception, especially for the laparoscopic surgery. The patient was an otherwise healthy 80-year-old woman with a known large hiatal hernia. She came to the outpatient department with symptoms of dysphagia, dyspnea, and acid regurgitation for 10 years. Her BMI was 24. The chest X-ray, there was no active lung regions, but an air bubble was seen within the chest, uh, which was the intergastric air located in the chest. CT scan showed intrathoracic proximal stomach. There was no signs of strangulation or ischemia. We did obtain upper gastrointestinal series with bottom swallow to confirm the presence of gastric upper body and fundus of stomach in the chest. On endoscopy, gastroesophageal junction was displaced upwards 6 cm from normal position. On the retroflexion view, gastric cardio and fundus was displaced upward the diaphragm, and erosive esophagitis or valid esophagus was not detected. There are four types of higher hernia, type 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, this case was type 3 mixed paraesophageal hernia because gastroesophageal junction was upward displaced and gastric fundus was also honeyed through the diaphragm. A total of five trochars were placed. River retractor was from the right subcostal trochar. The initial step of the procedure was reduction of proximal stomach from the mediastinal space. And the gastroepatic momentum overriding the caudate lobe of the river was divided. Our dissection was started at the right cruise and asparagus, but if the correct plane was not identified, we should move to the left side and study the dissection by incising the peritoneum alongside the left cruise. Ultrasonic shears was mainly used as an energy device. Hernia sac was isolated from the pleural membrane. It looks similar to the procedure of separating pseudo sac and hernia contents when operating direct type inguinal hernia. And then we extended this incision anteriorly, and this allowed us to enter the avascular plane between the hernia sac and mediastinum. and extended to patient right side continued with blunt dissection. Retroesophageal attachment to the aorta was carefully dissected.
retro espadrille window was opened. An umbilical tape was placed around the esophagogastric junctions and used for retraction. The posterior trunk of vagal nerve was identified and preserved. Retroesophageal part of hernia sac was also detached from the esophagus, cruz, and pleura. Hernia sac on the gastroesophageal junction was dissected. Attention should be paid on the preservation of vagal nerve structure. Short gastric vessels were divided starting at the lower pole of spleen level. Gastrosplenic omentum was divided, being careful with bleeding from short gastric artery and thermal injury of gastric wall by energy device. The assistant surgeon retracted the posterior wall of fundus using grasper. The phrenoesophageal ligament and the uppermost branch of short gastric artery was divided. Higher mediastinal dissection was performed. Circumferential mobilization of the asphagus was performed to obtain a length of at least 4 cm of intraabdominal asphagus. An asphagial lengthening procedure was not necessary for this case. The hernia sac was removed to create room for eventual fund application. To save the anterior vagus nerve, not totally but partially re removed the hernia sac. Then we started with the crural reconstruction starting from the posterior end. We used continuous suture with a non absorbable barbed suture thread and anchoring with a small plaget and laparotai clip. In the middle of crural repair, 42 French bougie was inserted to ensure that the chloroplasty was adequate. We did not use prosthetic or biologic mass for crural repair. We believe that even a large crural repair is possible with this method. The continuous suture method seems to be able to approximate both crews with more evenly distributed tension compared with interrupted suture method. On the last part of the suture, we put the pledget and anchored it with the laplatai clip. We grabbed the apex of fundus through the retroesophageal windows and right hand holding the great curved side of anterior wall of fundus. Then we perform the shoeshine maneuver to make sure there is no redundancy or twisting of the fundus. Because the patient's main symptom was acid regurgitation, we performed Nissan fundoplication instead of partial fundoplication.
we place two stitches to make 360 degree font application. Total length of font application should be shorter than 2 cm. In the suturing to make wrap, these figures was not included. We checked if the fund application was too tight or twisted by putting an instrument between the wrap and as figures. To prevent intrastrating migration of the wrap, additional two stitches were placed to fix the wrap to the asphagia wall. In this case, left side of the wrap uh, was fixed to asphagus by suturing lower and upper part of the wrap uh, with asphagus. Lastly, the posterior side of the wrap was fixed to the diaphragm on the center of the chloroplasty side. The patient was allowed to drink water immediately after surgery, soft diet from the first day morning, and discharged at the second day. Anti-adhesive agent was applied to prevent adhesion of left lobe of the river. Thanks for watching my presentation. Thank you. The topic given to me is the laparoscopy hepatectomy using 4K system. The video quality has been improved from SD to UHD recently and the 4K is uh, actually referred to as UHD or ultra high definition. It provides us with a higher imaging quality with increased depth perception in spite of 2D system. The 3D system uh, imaging system is available today and there are several advantages such as in the better depth perception and the spatial orientation. However, some people experience visual induced motion sickness such as headache, nausea, and eye fatigue. There have been not many studies comparing 4K versus 3D flexible, so today I will show you the video comparing this imaging system in the same patient. The patient was a 71-year-old male who had hepatitis B treated uh, with uh, tenophobia, the RFT was normal and the platelet count was 167K. The tumor markers was not much elevated. The CT showed that the tumor was located between segment 5 and H officially, as you can see here, and the endosymine green dye a test was done uh, one day before operation. Now I will show the video. I used the 4K imaging system in which ICG Florence imaging is launched. The Fox pump ligament is divided using energy device. Now it is the uh, inferior side of the liver and the liver is uh, detached from the penitorial leaflet and adhesions and right triangular ligament and lateral attachment was divided for the right liver mobilization. The pringle maneuver is prepared and the hepatodional ligament was encircled with a tape. tape. The, the ICG mode is turned on and you can see the tumor very clearly. It is 
uh, we can also perform, uh, conform with the ultrasonography. With the ultrasonography, the resection margin is determined and marked with the bobby. As you can see, the imaging quality is very good in full 4K system. And then uh, we uh, we did a stay, a stay suture for the retraction of the liver and time pressures procedure was easy and I usually use elastic band for the retraction and this band is brought out of the abdomen with fixed with the clamp. First, I use energy device to divide the liver capsule and the superficial part of the liver. After that, I use CUSA for deeper parenchyma dissection. Now, I prepare two videos, left side 4K and right side is 3D flexible. For the deeper part of dissection, Pringle maneuver is done with the boulder clamp. Anyway, well, unfortunately, I cannot show the 3D in this presentation. 4K image is much better than 3D flexible, but uh, it is a 30 degree rigid scope, so there is a limitation in viewing upper part of the dissection. The inferior edge disturbs the view of the dissection plane. On the other hand, the flexible scope provide so-called board eye view, anterior to posterior view, so we can easily see the deeper, deeper part of the dissection plane. As you can see the difference now. Same in the inferior part of the liver, inferior part of the dissection plane. I, I did another su state suture on the opposite side, and the photo dissection was done. Please compare two images. Actually, a flexible scope provide uh, more the more uh, fine view, more detailed view of a deeper side of a, of a dissection plane. Usually, uh, the 4K rigid system, we cannot see the deeper part easily. This is a 3D system comparing 4K 3D.
I see the fluorescent imaging is now on and you can recognize the resection margin. This is Also with the ultrasonography, you can confirm the resection margin very clearly. This is the resection plane and the tumor. In Pringle Maver, I use the 15 minutes clamping and the five, 10 to 15 minutes on clamping. Actually, it is sometimes difficult to see the deeper part of a breathing site with 4K because it is a rigid score. I alternatively used uh, 4K and 3D system and uh, you can see the difference. As I told you before, I'm sorry I cannot show you the 3D images. Now tumor is almost removed. Anyway, imaging quality is very good in 4K image. But still it is 2D image. It's a, the tumor was removed and uh, is a uh, car surface margin, car surface. Uh, I 
actually you can see the wider area area of surface in a 3D system because uh, it's a flexible scope. Tumor was well resected with a sufficient margin. In, in summary, 4K uh, system provide higher quality image and uh, with the less size strain. But it has a limitation such as not providing bone drive view because it is a rigid scope and lack of in depth perception. The liver is more 3D structure and we need more spatial orientation. So we are expecting 3D 4K flexible scope or, or 8K for more delicate liver surgery. Thank you for your attention. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for all the uh, speakers with your excellent uh, surgical techniques and beautiful 4K video clips. From now on, we'll have a live Q&A time with uh, four speakers. We have uh, uh, four speakers and I'd like to introduce them. Professor Hyung-ho Kim, Professor, uh, Dr. Yongjin Kim, and Professor Jung min Bak and Professor kyung sok -seo. Can you hear me very well? Yes. Um, uh, actually, uh, four speakers uh, talk about uh, um, some advantage of the 4K video clips than full HD. Actually, Purpose Bug and Purpose Gim and Professor and Dr. Gim uh, talk of, uh, told me Earth 4K video vision system is four times higher resolution than full HD. And also, we can get a good uh, spatial uh, orientation and uh, in-depth perception and good images. So, uh, but uh, 4K vision has uh, some uh, limitation than 3D or 2D full HD flexible scope. Actually, uh, uh, Professor Ledley mentioned about uh, 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 some disadvantage and advantage uh, of the uh, 4K vision system than full HD. Uh, also, every speaker agree about them, I believe, but uh, can you uh, give uh, some tip and some uh, difference with, uh, between the 4K and uh, 3D uh, full image HD? First, uh, Answer the proper scheme. Can you give us some my question? Some answers from my question. Yeah. Yes, uh, the poke assistant uh, give us more uh, precise image than three D image, but. Uh, upper GI or hepatobiliary uh, cancer surgery, we need a more angle uh, than uh, 30 degree uh, usually provided by 4K. So in that point, uh, the, already the professor mentioned about that, the 3D, the quality of the uh, figure is a less, less, than 4K, but sometimes it is more useful uh, to show the behind uh, behind anatomy. Yeah, so it is a, a little bit different. So uh, ultimately, I think the uh, flexible flexible 4K could be an uh, ultimate uh, solution uh, for visualization in laparoscopic surgery. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Dr. Gim, can you give us your um, answer about my question? 
uh, actually, it's my presentation, the focusing uh, today's main topic is a little long. So I received uh, this topic uh, maybe two or three weeks ago. So one presentation uh, missed this topic, so I replaced this uh, presentation. But uh, in, my uh, uh, in my opinion, I think the whole revision bariatric surgery, uh, the fine dissection and bone dissection is uh, almost needed. So the 4K vision is uh, much better than the 3D or full HD vision for the exposure of angle of ease. So I think the one of the benefits for 4K for revision bariatric surgery uh, is for the exposing the angle of ease much easier than the, uh, the previous systems. Uh, that's all. You. And uh, actually, we have a, a, a one question from the audience. So I uh, uh, I ask about that question to the professor uh, Jung Min Park uh, after the professor's comment. Uh, professor, can you give us some comment about the 4K vision system, uh, advantage of the 4K vision advantage and limitation of the 4K vision system than uh, full HD. Yes, sir. Um, I have not much experience in 4K system. I just uh, used uh, two times, and then uh, that video is the second time operation. And actually, image wise, very good. It's, uh, image quality is good, but uh, for liver, is uh, actually for liver is a very big organ, and it's actually 3D, much more 3D structure. Uh, than uh, stomach and any other things. So uh, we have to approach it to the very upper part of the liver and lateral part of the liver. So uh, image is much better in the 4K, but for the liver surgery, 3D flexible. 3D also important, but the more important thing is uh, flexible. So uh, I think uh, we need a more technical advance in 4K system for the liver surgery. Yeah, thank you very much for your good uh, answer. Uh, and Professor Bach, and uh, can, uh, can you give us some comment about uh, uh, another for uh, 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 about uh, my question? And also, uh, you have uh, one uh, question from the audience. And okay, first of all, yeah, give yes. give us your comment. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the, the the like uh, the surgery like uh, my uh, surgery the parasphagia hernia repair or bone application there are so many suture procedures in in, in the surgery so uh, the vision vision is absolutely better in 4K than uh, 3D flexible as but in suturing performing performs more suturing uh, there is absolutely uh, advantage in the 3D as the but at the in 4K even in 4K system because it is the better uh, great uh, color uh, uh, great uh, uh, image of color and so it's the in experience it's the, we we feel some uh, depth perception uh, due to the better color imagery I think so. Yeah, uh, Professor, uh, there is uh, one question from the audience and from uh, Gang, uh, Wangang University and Dongbei Gang. Uh, uh, actually, he is uh, doing a parasophagia hernia repair. Uh, the vagus nerve preservation is very difficult. So he want to uh, some comment from your team for the preservation of vagus nerve during the parasophagia hernia repair. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your question, Mr. Uh, Professor Kang. And uh, the bacon, bacon snow preservation is important to because the uh, post bagotum syndrome after vulnerification is the very most, the most common cause of uh, the post bagotum syndrome, uh, post operative parap, um, the, the gastroparesis uh, after uh, surgery. And uh, but it's so, uh, the, sometimes the vagus nerve preservation is very difficult, uh, in, especially in the revision case or shortened esophagus. Uh, sometimes, if uh, to relieve the shortened esophagus 
uh, in the part of the expired lengthening procedure, some surgeon recommend the cutting the, the vagus nerve. So uh, indeed, so uh, actually the vagus nerve preservation is very important and carefully dissection as the caution and the, the removal of hernia sac is important, but if uh, in difficult case, it's the, the vagus nerve uh, may be uh, removed for the aspergillary lengthening procedures. Yeah, thank, yeah, yes, thank, you. Thank, thank, thank you for a good uh, uh, answer. And there is another question from the audience to the Professor Hyung Kim. Kim. Uh, uh, could you feel any depth perception during 4K video surgery? Sure, yeah, you can feel some uh, depth of perception uh, during 4K uh, surgery. However, I think it is better, uh, some advantage over a 2D system. However, I think the in depth perception, uh, the 3D is the best. Uh, even uh, okay, uh, uh, give us some uh, depth, depth perception over 2D. Uh, but the 3D is the best in depth perception. Yeah. Or, or speakers agree with uh, Professor Kim's opinion, right? Yes, I agree. Yes. Especially in liver surgery. Uh, I, I, I don't have much experience in 4K, but uh, Compared to, I compare the two 4K system and 3D system in the same patient, and I use the scope alternatively, and then I cannot actually cannot feel any uh, depth perception in a 4K system uh, when I compare to uh, the 3D system. So still, is uh, I, I, I the for the liver surgery the 3D flexible I favor that one. Okay. Any other comment? Uh, yeah, <laughs> because of time's limitation, uh, I'd like to close this uh, session. And thank you very much for the all very ex for excellent speakers and audience to uh, participate in this session, uh, join this session. I hope uh, the COVID-19 crisis will be stopped soon. And I wish for everyone's health and happiness. Um, God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. The next section is keynote. Uh, begin right after this session. Thank you very much. Thank you.